Welcome back to part through of my playthrough with a uh, kind of simple review of the different elements and different actions. So once again, I'm Grant with theplayersaid.com playing Castle Eider. Uh, this is our second video in this series and we have come to the point I'm going to go back to the, uh, the SS deck. So once again, we're going to draw our three cards without looking. Put them down so that you can see them. Okay, we're gonna have a mortar crew potentially coming in. Let's go ahead and roll. We roll a five. So a five is this purple. I have no suppression tokens. It's going to be placed here and it's now going to suppress one of those positions in the purple. We'll roll a six-sider. It's gonna suppress five, so there. It's gonna roll three dice looking for five or higher. And I didn't roll any fives. Perfect. So I don't get suppressed. All right, next card. We have a flak 37. It's gonna attack. Uh, we're gonna roll a die to see where it attacks. It attacks number three, which is the Great Hall. Has a defense of six. We're gonna roll all five dice. Let's go ahead and move that up there. Looking for sixes. Nope. Another beautiful roll there showing no sixes. So that attack is over. And now we've got a Panzerfaust attack on the Besotten Jenny. Four dice needing sixes. And they do hit once, so it's down to a five. I've been very fortunate on those attacks. I don't feel like I've rolled many attacks that have successfully hit, and, and that's okay. All right, so now back to the defender's action. I've already removed all the counters. We're gonna get our five action points. And what I need to do is we really need to control the guys on this yellow line and this line here. So we're gonna, uh, potentially we're gonna do some attacks. Well, but I'm right now I'm gonna go ahead and unexhaust this commander for my first action. My second action, I'm gonna unexhaust that commander, and my third, I'm gonna unexhaust that commander. So I, that's kind of preparing so that next round I can do something. Over here, I'm gonna go ahead and fire with Rushford using that token. Remember, we'll move it back up there because we have to reload it. And that's going to give me seven Suppression tokens in the gray. There's seven. So I will. I now have nine in that area. I should be able to use those to keep those guys out of there. And that'll be really nice. <clears throat> For my fifth and final action, I'm actually going to move. Yeah, I have to move him there to the Great Hall. I don't want to waste that action on that. I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot with this guy at this rifleman. So one dice needing a three or higher. I rolled a four. That rifleman comes off. Very good. All right, back to the next SS phase. I'm gonna draw our three cards, take them one at a time. We have a couple of riflemen. Let's roll two dice to see where the first rifleman goes. Number five. So it's going to locate over there. I have no purple suppression token. So he's going to locate there on the left. We're going to roll a 10. And that is black. I'm going to use two black suppression to try and keep him out, needing threes or higher. Got it. So we don't place that second rifleman. We're going to have a Sturm. Roll 2d6. We roll a 7 which is a black, I'm gonna use three suppression tokens. Needing to roll a five or higher, got a six. So I stop him from coming on the board. You can see the power of those suppression tokens. Sturm, we're gonna to roll to see where he goes. He's going to go to a seven. I'm gonna use two suppression tokens to roll two D6 try to keep him off needing fives or sixes, and he's gonna come on. But you can definitely see the power 
of those suppression tokens. They really keep guys off the board so you don't have to worry about taking your actions to fight them. So we've survived another round. We're gonna get our five action tokens and we're gonna go ahead and take some actions. Here I'm gonna exhaust him to unexhaust these two guys. They will have these, they can't act this round, which is fine. I'm also gonna go ahead and exhaust this to unexhaust these three guys. They will also get no action tokens. And for my third action, I'm going to exhaust this leader to unexhaust, unexhaust, and remove a disruption token. It's my fourth action. <sighs> Let's see what I want to do. I think I'm going to get rid of this mortar here on the right side. So I'm going to use Simzik. He's going to have an attack of two. So he's going to roll two dice, needing fours to stop that or to kill that mortar here on the right side. Got a six. So that mortar gets removed. That's important. So we'll take that off. That's my five actions. We'll go back to the SS cards. Lay them down. All right, we have a mortar. I just shot a mortar. So we're going to see it's going to go to the six. So it's going to go to purple. Have no purple suppression markers. So we're going to place that here. He's going to roll a die to see which combat position he targets. There's no one there, so he's going to move to the next highest. So this guy's going to be targeted. It's going to roll three dice, needing fives or higher. He rolls it, so he is now disrupted. That card's over. We go to the next card, pack 40. Roll a die to see where it attacks. It's going to attack the keep, which is here. We're going to roll four dice, needing sixes. And they roll a six, so the defense drops to a five. And then the third card is a Sturm. Roll 2d6, he's gonna to go to the 11. I'm gonna use two suppression markers. Nope, I have no green suppression markers. So I can't stop the Sturm from locating here in this green location. That's gonna move that counter up. And now that's starting to become a little bit of a problem. And those Sturms are just hard to kill. They're fives, but you need fives or sixes. It's just hard to get it. But I need to get at, get it, get at it and uh, try to get through these guys. I need to get them off the board. I think this, this round I'm gonna try to target all attacks just so I can try to get some of these guys off the board and get them off my back. Okay. Um, so here with Pollock, my first action, he's going to take an attack with two dice. And I'm going to go ahead, I think I'm going to attack this mortar in purple. So he's going to get two dice, needing fours. And I got it, so that mortar comes off. So that's one attack. I'm gonna go ahead and use an action to take off this disrupted marker. And that doesn't make it so you can't use him. So I can still use that guy. He's in a yellow or purple position. I'm gonna go ahead with that one die, take a shot and try to get rid of that mortar misses. So that's, that was my second action. My third action, oh geez. I need to get rid of this green guy. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this one, one guy. Roll just one die, needing a three or higher. I got a three. So that rifleman comes off, very good. My fourth action. Um, fourth action. I really wanna take another one off that yellow track. So I think I'm gonna go ahead 
and fire with this guy and attack that uh, rifleman over there. One die needing a three. Got it. So that rifleman comes off. And then I'm going to use this guy. Or did I use him to? I used him to. I should have exhausted him. I didn't exhaust him. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one guy to attack that rifleman on the yellow track. One die needing a three. Got a six. There, my dice rolls have come back a little bit. So that finishes up my turn. That was a very productive turn. I think I knocked a couple of guys off. Let's draw our three SS cards. Attack location, Basatin Jenny. Basatin Jenny has a defense of five. This is starting to get dicey over there. Okay, they're gonna take one hit. So now one more hit and that, that place blows up. So I have to ask myself, is it worth sticking around one more time to get some suppressions or do I need to start moving them out? So we'll see. We will see. All right, pack 40, I need to roll a six-sider. They are going to attack the South Terrace, which is a defense of six. Four dice needing sixes. They miss, fantastic. And then my final card is Flak 30, Disrupt Defenders. We're gonna roll a die. We roll a four, which is red. So this is where we're gonna roll two dice for each defender in the red positions, putting a disrupted token if they are hit. So needing, for the North Terrace, we need five. So let's start here. Okay, he's fine, thank you. These guys need fives. Let's start here, nothing. He takes another disrupted, he's dead. Okay, so he's gonna be killed. And that was probably my bad because I shouldn't have let him have that for that long. Petr Petrakovich, okay, he's gonna get a disrupted marker. And now my leader, Schrader, who's exhausted, is, is going to be missed. And then we have this final guy here. And they're a six, the South Terrace. So he doesn't get hit. Roll double fives. So yeah, that was okay. We lost the defender. I need to start moving some French guys up. So we'll, uh, we'll look at that. Let me think about that for a second. Once again, those French guys moving Moving them exhausts them, and it's just, it's such a, a hassle. But I will say it is nice to have those extra dice. So I'm going to go ahead and move this guy over here. He's going to become exhausted. That's my first action. I'm going to move him there. That, he becomes exhausted, but at least I get him out. Now next time he can help. I'm going to unexhaust this leader who can't be used. I'm gonna unexhaust this leader who can't be used. And then I need to decide, I probably need to do an attack. Actually, I'm not, not bad. Tell you that Besat and Jenny's gonna get hit hard and I need to figure out how to get out of that. Um, I think I'm just gonna take a pot shot here with Hokel on uh, one of these green locations, I'm gonna go for this Rifleman. One die needing a three. Miss. All right, that's my five actions. Back to the SS, SS phase. Draw our three cards, we're gonna play them one at a time. Suppressive Fire, Disrupt, def disrupt Defenders. So this is the one where you're gonna, you're gonna find every mortar and machine gun on the map. And uh, they're then going to get attacks. Start with the MG or mortar counters in the lowest numbered SS counter placement. Roll one die to identify the corresponding defender combat position that's targeted. If the result of the roll is a combat position that's empty, go to the next higher. If no higher, go to the lower. Roll a number of die equal to the disrupt value. 
MGs it's two or mortars is three, if le at least one roll is higher, equal or higher to, that defender gets a disrupted token. So that's it. So pretty simple, we only have one mortar in the sixth space of the purple. So that's pretty good. So they're gonna roll a die in the purple locations. He rolls a five, which targets this guy. He's then, he's then gonna roll three dice, needing fives or higher. Ooh, three sixes. So he's gonna be disrupted. Bummer. That's it. So it, that can be really bad if you have four or five machine guns and mortars around. I've been very good about getting those off the board and it's, it's not really hurt me. Okay, Basat and Jenny's gonna get attacked. This could be very bad, guys. I'm gonna lose all three of those. I should have moved them. Four or higher, bam. Now, let me, let me see. I may go down to zero and then one, it may be one more shot. Let me, let me look at this. Let me look at this, sorry. Yeah, this is a, uh, it's a defense value for reaches zero, Basat and Jenny is considered destroyed. All right, so the Basat and, Basat and Jenny is destroyed. I'm going to lose all three of those guys. They died heroically. I probably should have tried harder to defend that, but I didn't. So I lost those guys, that's going to hurt. Now we have two Sturms, which isn't good. The first Sturm is gonna be at an eight. So I will use the two remaining suppressed tokens, two needing fives or higher. I got a five so he doesn't come on the map. And then the other Sturm is gonna go in at three, which is this red, I can't stop it. He moves up and that goes there. Well, we lost the Basat and Jenny. That wasn't great, but I got cocky with it. I probably should have moved those guys out, but that's, that's the way life is. That just lost me a bunch of points. But, uh, oh well. All right, let's take these no action markers off because they can now act. So I'm gonna go ahead, my first action, I'm gonna use that commander to unexhaust, remove the disruption, and unexhaust. That worked out well. Unfortunately, they cannot act this round, and that's okay. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and unexhaust all three of these guys, and they get no action markers. I put one of my action tokens there. That's my second action. And I'll talk to you about that Inspire counter here in a moment. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use an action to unexhaust this leader, who next turn can do some things. And I'm going to go ahead and unexhaust this leader. And let's see. Boy, I just don't really have a lot of a lot of options. I've uh, used a lot of my good options up. I'm going to go ahead and yeah, that's a waste. He can do that next turn. And we'll go ahead and just unexhaust that guy for the next time. So I didn't get to kill anybody or really take any actions, but I'm not really I'm not really in trouble in any location. So let's go ahead and draw the next 3 SS cards. Pack 40. Let's see where he's going to attack. The Great Hall right here. That's exactly where I didn't want to attack, but that's okay. Four dice needing sixes. They missed. Fantastic. Next card is another pack, or it's a Flax 37. Roll a die, they're going to attack the keep, which is right here. Five dies, five dice needing fives. Will you look at that? That's awesome, total misses. The final card, reinforcements. Add the defenders with the reinforcement R attribute designation to my supply. So at the beginning of the game, you were told to remove the three reinforcement markers 
from your counter mix and put off to the side. They then come in now and they are available for me to move in. They're uh, better at suppressive attack than regular attack, so I will probably move them around and try to get some suppression markers out. But that is the third and final SS card for this round. Now we go back to my action phase and we are nearing the end, so bear with me. Let's take off all these action markers because every one of these guys can now act. And I will talk to you about the I or inspire trait. So real quickly, I think I already mentioned this to you, but that I trait there on that French guy, what that does is it gives an extra die on attacks to any guys within the same location. So he's located in the Great Hall. He's gonna give a plus one to both these soldiers. So you can imagine what I'm going to do. Well, there's no yellows right now, but I'm gonna to try to shoot those yellows and really help them out. I will also maybe move one into the green and figure out how I can help those guys out, but that makes a huge difference. You can also do suppression tokens, although in the yellow space, it doesn't matter. But that's what those guys are for, and they're not really worth every, anything, but they cannot be disrupted nor exhausted for that ability to work. So with my first action, I'm gonna go ahead and unexhaust these two guys, and they cannot act this round. And then I'm gonna do this guy to remove that and unexhaust these two guys. He can act, but these two guys cannot because they were exhausted. So I'll put that there. And then, so that's my second action. So now I gotta start asking myself where I am in danger. I need to work on green a little bit and red a little bit. So let's see. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my third action to fire with Pollock. And he's gonna attack this rifleman in red. He has line of sight there. He has two dice, needing threes or higher. Should be, okay, that's a hit. So I remove that rifleman. All right, so that's my third action. For a fourth action, I'm gonna go ahead and unexhaust this guy. He won't be able to, because then I can attack black and yellow locations. And then for my fifth and final action, Probably, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot with this guy on this mortar again and try to make that work. So I have one die needing four or higher. I got a six, so I remove that mortar. So yeah, I think I'm in really good shape. All right, next SS phase, we draw our three cards, put them down. All right, we have a sniper. Roll a six-sider to see which color. He's gonna target red combat positions. We're gonna roll a dice to see which combat position. He's gonna target number two, which is this guy. So he has four dice, needing fives or higher. Wow, once again, really bad roll for them, but that's good for me, my guys don't get killed. Pack 40 is going to attack, roll a six-sider. He's going to attack Basat and Jenny, which is destroyed, no effect. And then the Flak 30, disrupt defenders. This is the one where they're gonna attack every defender in the color. Roll a six-sider, it's red. So we're gonna roll two dice for each red color. Starting with that, needing fives, miss. Needing a five, he's disrupted. Needing fives, he's not disrupted. Needing fives, he's fine. Needing fives, he's fine. This one needs six. Okay, so he's disrupted. All right, so we survived. Got a couple disruption markers that I didn't want, but that's okay. Got to remember, I've got those guys in reserve that I can bring in. Okay, my five actions. Take off all those action markers. 
because every one of these guys can now act, which is good. Okay, take those off. So I'm gonna try to do some damage here. There's nobody in those yellows though. That's, that's the bad thing. Well, there are some guys in green. So one of my actions is gonna to be to remove the disruption marker from that rifleman so that I can attack. I'm also going to unexhaust this leader. And then I'm gonna fire. That doesn't take it away from him. So I'm gonna fire this guy on the rifleman. One die needing threes. Got it. So this rifleman in, in the space 12 dies. And I flip him over. That was my third action. My fourth action, I'm gonna go ahead and fire with this rifleman on this scout. So this is, I need fours, a little harder roll. One needing a four, got it. And for my fifth and final action, I exhausted him, really cleaned those out. I can't fire with the red, or I can do the reds. I'm gonna go ahead and do this guy. Fire on that rifleman, because that's red. One die needing three. Okay, I got a two and missed. That's okay. So those are my five actions. Back to the S. And we're getting close to the end. I can pull those end card at end card at any moment. Rifleman, we're gonna place three of these bad boys. And this isn't good because I have no suppression markers. So they're gonna go wherever they go. Rifleman one goes in number six. It's right there. Could be worse. Rifleman number two goes in number nine. That's over here. So that scout's gonna move up. And the final rifleman goes in space eight, which is here. That scout moves, he moves there. So that's starting to get a little concerning. Machine gunner, place one. He's gonna go in spot number six which is that purple up there. So now he's gonna decide which purple space he's going to attack, roll a die. He's gonna attack space number two, which is here, which is my commander. He's gonna roll two die, needing fives. Okay, so he disrupts him, doggone it. All right, but I survived that, that's okay. And then an attack on Number three, which is the Great Hall, which has a defense of six. Five needing sixes. All right, they rolled a six. So that's gonna move down to a five. That's okay. All right, we survived that SS card round. Back to my five actions. I'm gonna have to do some work on that yellow track. Uh, there's nobody there. All right, let's... First action. First action, I'm gonna fire this guy. He's gonna get one die from his printed value plus one die from the presence of De La Roche. So he's gonna get 2d6, needing four or higher. And he got a five, so he kills that scout. I'm gonna do the same thing with Warsham. Once again, one for his printed value, one for the Inspire. We're gonna shoot that rifleman. Needing threes, and I miss, of course. Isn't that just the way it is? Um, but that's okay. So I'm gonna use him, my third action. He only gets one die, needing a three on that rifleman. They're on the, so I'm attacking with that guy on that rifleman. And he misses, doggone it. That's gonna end up hurting me, guaranteed. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and unexhaust this leader and I'm gonna unexhaust this leader for my final two actions. And that's it for that round. So now I gotta pick up three more SS cards. And remember, we can, we can draw that end game card at any moment now, so we're doing well. Place three riflemen. Not what I like to see because this could end the game. Space seven. 
So a rifleman's going to go up there. The next one, eight. They're going to move there, he's going to move there, and a rifleman's going to go in that spot. A space 11, which is a green space. That's going to move that sturm up, so that goes there. The next card is place two sturm. I roll a six, which is that, this space up here. The MG doesn't move, but the sturm goes there. Second sturm, I roll a nine, which is going to move that, that, and that. Yeah, I'm going to have to get busy and kill those guys or I'm going to die. And three riflemen. This could end the game, guys. This is just the way it is. All right, we got a seven, which isn't good. No, it's okay. Seven. We roll a nine, which isn't good. That's a rifleman. So it's going to come down to this one roll. If I roll a nine or an eight, we lose the game. I roll a seven and we lose the game. Because, doggone it, that's going to push a guy. That just got out of control. I didn't have enough suppression markers at the end. I, I got lax and actually missed a roll or two over here. If I could have killed one of those guys, it would have been different. But that's the way the game ended. So, because they got into the house, I automatically lost, and I don't tally victory points. If I had survived, so let's go ahead and look at the remaining SS cards. That was a Mortar, a Sturm. The game would have ended next round. Would it have ended, and it would have ended immediately. So, a little bit unlucky. There at the end, some bad die rolls. You know, I think on this guy over here, we missed twice. If I'd have just missed, killed him once, that would have ended differently. But there you go. That is an example of a playthrough of Castle Lighter. So if you watched the first video, that was about an hour and 10 minutes. This video is about 30 minutes. The game is designed to be played in 45 to 60 minutes. If I'm not having to explain things to you and point things out and talk about abilities and attributes and defenses and cards, this game would have been over in 45 to 50 minutes. It's just the way it is. It's a quick game. I like it. It's a fast playing quick game that gives you a lot of decisions. Oh my gosh, do I take off this disrupted marker, disrupted marker hoping he doesn't uh, die? Or do I want to unexhaust Gangle so that he can unexhaust some other guys so I can start firing back? Do I want to use the Besotten Jenny to kill guys or do I want to get a bunch of suppression tokens? I think suppression tokens are worth their weight in gold. Had I had three or four suppression tokens there near the end of that round, I would have been able to keep those guys off the board, most likely. Just a lot of choices. I also, I am a methodical person. I like solitaire games that have a methodical sequence of play. This game moves right down the line. You take defender actions, five of them. You take three SS cards and do what they say, and then you just start it over. Very simple. You follow it through, and the game can be very fun, but very quick playing, and really gives you a lot of good choices. That's what I like about it. So you can go ahead and jump in on this Kickstarter. You can also see this is a pre-production copy. It is absolutely phenomenal. The art is great. These are the backs of the cards. The counters are fantastic. They have actual historical pictures of those, those leaders and, and uh, soldiers. Really like those. Just a lot of great elements to this game that make it, make it good. Um, the board's laid out very well. Once again, the only thing I would say about the board is as you can see, these numbered spaces, when they're uncovered, you can see it clearly. That's a big 12. But when you've got a counter in there and you've rolled your 2d6 and you're looking, where's seven? After a while, you get used to where the numbers are, but I'd like to see that number be a little smaller and maybe be in a secondary circle right out here or a square. 
I think that would be a better way to do that. Um, also feel like that with the combat positions. So if you look at the combat positions, you can see you have the same problem. You got a counter in there and that combat position number is covered up. If it was up here, just on the outside where you could see it, it would be much better, much easier to read. So those are just a small, couple of small critiques that I, that I hope maybe they change before the final production copy. But this is definitely a fun game. Well worth its cost because of the production, the play value, the replay value. Like I said, now this is the, I think the fifth or sixth time I've played. It's still as fun as if I hadn't played it yet. And what I would also say is, remember I mentioned at the beginning of the first video that there are variants in order to, to uh, ramp the, the uh, difficulty up. There are what are called, and I've played with the tactics cards twice and gotten destroyed both times, but there are tactics cards that come secondary and what you're going to do is you're going to build a deck based on the instructions in the scenario book. You're going to build this deck and then each SS round you're going to pull one of these cards and this card will be active for all three of those SS cards. So looking at this and you can see the one in the bottom. So this one's going to coincide with the one deck. This one's called Barrage. When resolving an 88 millimeter flak 37 or 75 millimeter pack 40 card, roll one extra die for the attack roll. So what's going to happen is these cards are going to make it easier for the SS to do something to you and also make it very difficult for you. So yeah, you can see there's a bunch of these tactics cards. There's several for each. And when you set them up, you're going to take out a certain amount so you're not going to play the same ones over and over again. But this is an option to make the game a little more difficult to ratchet up that difficulty. And I recommend the tactics cards after you've played a couple of times to understand. One of the other things we didn't really talk about and I might have made a mistake on, probably did, but there are these, these low morale fighters. These are, see the M? When, one of, when a counter in that area is targeted and it's killed, these morale, low morale counters will also be killed with it. It's like they break and run. But you'll notice I have an officer located in the same attack area because if he's located there, that nullifies that uh, negative ability. So you can see I tried to spread them around. I put an officer here with that rifleman. Uh... Here's officers there, but I don't have any riflemen. So those extra abilities are very neat. You got to pay attention to them. I like the strategic concepts that you have to think through to make sure you have the, get the most out of your guys. I didn't use the Inspires as much as I did have in other games. But ideally, you want one of these French Inspire guys almost in each area giving you more dice so that when you're attacking, it's easier. I didn't get that going this time. I was more concerned about suppression tokens and then trying to clear the north so I could get Bar uh, Baratra out, which I was successful in. I just knocked some counters down. But I, I like that element, that planning element, trying to make sure your resources are in the right places at the right time. Really like that concept. And, and once again, the... The AI is very well done. You roll 2d6 for most every placement and you just place them where they're supposed to go. And I, I really like that. I think this game is very good. So well done, David. DVG does a great job in not only running these campaigns, preparing them, creating great stretch goals. I don't know anything about the stretch goals, but then fulfilling them quickly. They do a great job. So if you back this one, here at the end of the year, my guess is it'll be out in June, give or take. I have not read anything that tells me otherwise or tells me that's the case, uh, but that would be my guess. So definitely look for Castle Eider. And if you also want to play a game that's similar but has some different elements, Pavlov's House is very good, made by the same designer and uses a similar system. I love that game. I've played it 15 or 20 times. Um, so there you go. Uh, appreciate you watching. 
If you have any uh, questions, put them down in the comments below. If you liked our videos, please like and subscribe to the channel. We do war game reviews, board game reviews, strategy articles. Uh, we take a look at mechanics, different styles and types of games. We also try to share with you what's new and upcoming. We do designer interviews, although we feel like recently we haven't done many. Uh, but we definitely work hard on that. So check out the blog at theplayersaid.com. Uh, and I've been Grant, and I've appreciated this opportunity. Thank you.